everyone. Christine Beckwith here. Welcome to our safety certification course with Clear Boundaries. We are so excited that you're with us today and that you have chosen to make an investment in the safety of yourself and others that you may be teaching in the future through the certification that we've created. I want to get started right away and introduce you to myself and Jessica Peterson who are the authors of Clear Boundaries. So with that, let me tell you a little bit about Jessica. Jessica is a social media impactor, and she has a niche for branding, productivity, and the wow factor with her wow, Simply Wow agency. She's a wife, mother, philanthropist, a TEDx speaker, best-selling author of six books, developer of the 6K and 7K Wow Blueprint, and a certified business and marketing coach, and just an amazing overall person. And we will tell you in just a moment about how we met and why it was our cause came together to create such a wonderful book that we know is going to save lives. Here I am, Christine Beckwith, and some of my highlights that people care to know about is that I am a top 50 woman in mortgage. I've been rated so uh, by MPA, which is Mortgage Professionals of America, on multiple uh, programs and years. I'm a 30-year mortgage industry veteran. I'm in the top 2% of female banking, which I'm truly proud of as an executive. And I am the best-selling author of two books, Wise Eyes and Clear Boundaries. So I can't wait to tell you all about the things in this book that we have created that are going to create safety for yourself and for the people that you're teaching through the certification. So let's talk about the book for a moment. We hope that the gathered information will protect you from dangerous situations. We have agreed if even one life is saved by reading the tips in this book, we will have greatly succeeded in spreading our veil of defense. Let, it, let me show you our website landing page, and I want you all to write this down, www.businesswomansafety.com. We have made our website an interactive website where you can subscribe for free, and you can share your stories. When you get into reading the Clear Boundaries book, you're going to discover that the book is a combination of many professional women's stories across America that we engage to help us write this book and tell real life stories of near harm and violence and survival and best practice tips that we have shared. We want that to continue with our subscribers and readers. So you may share your story if you feel you have one compelling to share um, or just because it will feel good to get the story out and liberate you um, from your experience because this is a community of like-minded people that are trying to move forward and create safety with one another. So we welcome you to learn about our book there, join us there, sh share the certification with other people, and um, learn about the cause that we have through Clear Boundaries. I want to take a moment here to thank all of the people that participated in the building of Clear Boundaries. We had countless women and men that contributed, self-defense, uh, masters, bodyguards, uh, and all of it culminated into one uh, wonderful manual of safety. So thankful, we are grateful, and we commend you for your personal stories and your painful stories that were shared, even the, at the difficult times. This has helped all of us learn valuable lessons, and your gift to this book and the people that we're paying it forward to cannot be understated. People that are reading this book and why they're reading this book are women who want to be safe in their careers. So for all the professional women that exist out there, there are intersections that are occurring in our current state, uh, in the office place, in their work travel, um, on cyber, uh, through social media, and even work sites, uh, professional sites that they're interacting. And we have given all of the safety tips for all of those modern day things. So men who love and adore women, men, if you are listening in this certification, I know you have a female loved one, whether it's a coworker, a peer, or whether it's someone in your immediate family, your daughter, your mother, this is for you. This is uh, a book that you should buy as a gift that has the greatest sentimental meaning that you could possibly give. Um, and we hope you will pay the gift of safety forward. And this is a great book for teenagers. We feel that young women, young adults, 
need to know how to position themselves. That's why we titled this book, Clear Boundaries. That brings me to our mission. I get so sentimental when I look at these two faces. Um, the one giving you the sly eye there in the orange shirt is Nikki Evangelist. And Nikki and I worked together when I was 18 in my first bank banking job um, and um, unfortunately would become a missing person and then later discovered murdered. That was the first time I was impacted by a tragic, violent uh, event that occurred against a woman from a man and her absence would become profound for me. Um, even though she had been in my life a short time, she became somebody that had a lifelong impact. And I'm so proud to memorialize her in this book she's spoken about in the last chapter. And I will tell you the same is true for the other beautiful woman there smiling with the big smile, Colleen Brownell, who is a coworker, was a coworker with me at my primary job at Annie Mac Home Mortgage, and unfortunately died on uh, the evening of December 30th, 2017, at the hands of a violent domestic situation. Another profound life snuffed short. You know, I have two compelling reasons, and this is what brought me to meeting Jessica. That is our emotional link. Uh, that is our mission. And um, we hope that you understand that this is driven from a very personal and real place, and that this book can save the lives of your friends and coworkers. So how did we get here? Well, let's look at some of the facts. Between 1966 and 2018, women in the workforce have grown from a minority level to a majority level, tipping the scales at 51% of the workforce. We recognize those barriers. We still, as women, have barriers to overcome. Entry into the workforce is still hard. We are still a minority in management roles at 38%. We are still fighting for equal pay, and we are still fighting for promotions. Those are the facts uh, as you look at them. So how do we react to what we know? Let's summarize what we just saw. We have a greater percentage of women in the workplace now, but we still are struggling for certain hurdles within the workplace. Well, it's created an environment where interaction between men and women are at an all-time high within the workplace. Social media interaction is at a high and continues to rise. That's a mechanism of our culture um, and how we interact and interface. And internet imaging of women is confusing to both genders. So we're gonna talk about things that have never been talked about through this certification that's gonna help you keep you safe. Historically, high numbers of women file lawsuits, allege harassment and discrimination. Women are taking a stance in society and Clear Boundaries was written to create clarity on both sides. Let's stop here and do our first assignment. The very first thing that we're going to have you do is break out in the room that you're in and talk about and discuss personal experiences that you may have. Part of coming together in a community is being open and sharing those stories of near harm. So stop the class now, pause, and go ahead and do this breakout session. I would time yourself for 15 minutes, uh, 20 minutes, just depending on the size of your group. If you're in a larger group, break out into smaller groups of maybe six to eight people and go around the room um, trying to keep each of your stories anywhere from two to three minutes long and um, tell about the story that occurred and then how you overcame that story. That's a great way to share that best practice. So here we're going to talk about top safety tips. The number one thing that you can do for yourself is be alert and aware at all times in public. Do not allow your senses to be dulled by alcohol or other substances, especially when you're alone. Number one tip right here in the book, fight for your life if attacked. I cannot say this enough. I'm going to repeat it. Fight for your life if attacked. Unfortunately, Hollywood has made a lot of movies where there's been two hour long dramatizations of women being abducted uh, and they're taken and they're put in cars and they're brought into homes and they're held prisoner. And then this wonderful person comes and saves them in the last 10 minutes of the movie. And the reality is having polled and reviewed statistics with criminal violent um, crime offenders is that that's not a reality, that the women that 
actually end up safe or saving themselves are the women that immediately fight because most of the criminals that are coming for you are coming for you in a public place. Interestingly, the number one thing in a criminal's mind is getting caught. With that in mind, women have the greatest chance of survival if they fight during the initial moments of the attack. So please keep this in mind. That is going to be your safety. Another top safety tip is run. Always run immediately. And do not freeze out of fear. Respond with action. And I will tell you, if you are an Apple iPhone user, press the side button five quick times to call 911 and it will track your GPS. So iPhone, Apple has added a great emergency feature, which we highlight in the book and spell out and allows you to um, immediately get a police connection to where you are. It is a great way to save your life. Please, please uh, test that out. I would say to the point of pressing it five times to see the screen come up, um, but not the next step that would trigger it starting, um, but at least get familiar and definitely read about it in our book. Internet safety is key. Be careful of who you let into your world. Protect your image. Clear boundaries dives deeply into image protection and the neuroscience of imaging. It talks about how men see women's imaging. Um, and it's very blunt about how that is tied to their reaction, what they're thinking when they see imaging, and where we as women can help them not be so confused about the messages that we're sending. And sorry, ladies, I know that we want to have beautiful pictures on the internet, and we want to attract that maybe one guy that we have in mind, but we need to remember that when we do that, we are sending out an image to all of the public and all of the people on our media and the net we're throwing out might be bringing back um, some strangers or people that we aren't intending those imaging for. So we really stress to you to keep those images private um, and intentional in the way that you deliver them. It's important that we draw clear lines. Now, in this uh, specific tip, we're gonna tell you that physical touching be aware of how and where hands are used on interaction. Guys, you know, we get it. And women, we understand. There's a, I'm a French woman and I talk with my hands. I'm talking with my hands right now as I'm, I'm doing this certification for you. But you need to know that putting your hand on someone's shoulder, touching their elbow, putting the, your hand on their leg, you know, all of those uh, can be interpreted um, offensively by women. They can be interpreted as advances. Um, and not as innocent gestures as they may be innocent gestures. So it's very important that you make sure that you're not doing that. And if you find yourself in a position where that is being done to you, you need to speak up and you need to not be afraid to address it. Like, hey, that makes me feel uncomfortable. Now, we also tell you on social media safety that there are no regulations. So the lines are very blurred in regards to imaging. In an attempt to appear attractive, which I just said, it can be very confusing. Let's break down why that imaging is confusing. I can tell you one of the things is that men see porn imaging and social media imaging and have a hard time delineating the difference. Understand there's a whole billion dollar, billions of dollars worth of business going on out there. You know, men that are seeing and viewing porn are also viewing you on the same devices. So science proves that the brain sees images as a form of sexual stimulation. Lines blur when projected images cause confusion, leading to unsolicited advances and creating great societal confusion. Um, I think that we all understand, and in writing a book about boundaries in this generation, this is something that is uh, the elephant in the room and needed to be addressed. So for what that's worth, I hope that you all appreciate we both have obligations in creating those boundaries. So we created a Facebook frame that can be used for your profile. Um, we put the words keep your professional on there. Um, and Jessica did this frame. She did a beautiful job. It's in our colors. And we're going to show you in just a minute how this can save you from a lot of unsolicited uh, advances. We went ahead and put this frame on all of our uh, pictures. There you see myself, Jessica, and Candy Zolkowski, our, our editor. And um, you see that we put these frames on and almost immediately when we did so, the advances stopped. 
So please uh, go into Facebook, find it under uh, Clear Boundaries, and I think it says created by Jessica Peterson, and put it on your picture, save it, and then take a screenshot of your profile. Um, because what that allows you to do is then take that profile picture and put it up in all other social medias. Not all social medias allow framing or have framing. We were not able to put the Keep It Professional frame in all of the social media uh, apps that exist. So if you just do it from Facebook and you screenshot your profile picture, you can load that picture as your image in all other social media uh, pictures and you'll have the frame with you for all the other social medias. All right, this brings us to assignment number two. You just finished sharing your personal experiences. So now let's go around the room after everything we talked about and let's talk about the topic that we just finished on the social media front. And for 15 minutes, everybody break back out into your groups, pause this certification and just talk about what your thoughts are about how you can protect yourself with social media. There's endless tips in the book that we're not covering in this certification because this is a high cliff note version of the book. Uh, but talk about the things that if you have the book handy, open them up to this section and take a look at the many tips that we have for other things that can protect you with social media. So go ahead and share what you know is going to protect you from drawing strangers that are unsolicited into your social media or professional media areas. Okay, welcome back. I hope that exercise was great and that you learned a lot from doing that exercise and that you'll be able to apply a lot of those tips to the safety that you're going to have going forward. So now we go into a part of the book where we talk about movement. You're out and about in the world and now you are in a parking lot at the end of a business meeting. You're in a parking lot shopping at night, ladies. You're in a parking lot traveling. Be aware as you walk, especially if you're in a dark setting. But we tell you, be mindful, even when you're parking during the day, if you're going to be somewhere a long time and into the night, park near light poles, park where you know it's going to be well lit, park close to the building. There's a reason for that. Stay away from the far, far away parking. And if you have no choice but to park far away, then please bring a small flashlight with you. Put one in your purse. I have one that has a keychain that's on my purse, something like that. Is, is very helpful to just being lit up. Have a key and a mace in hand. See our key as a, a defense weapon. Later in the book, we have an area where you can put the key between your uh, pointer finger and your middle finger and hold it like a weapon. We teach you how to use it as a weapon. Um, I walk with it that way now, and it's extremely helpful um, in giving me the, the mindset and alertness I need um, for that situation should it occur. And tell others that you work with that um, you fear your safety because of where you park if you need to, because you can create a buddy walking system, especially if you're leaving late at night. This is one of the number one areas that people are abducted. Now, for those of you professionals that are traveling in and out of airports, we have a whole section on this in the book. Do not interact with strangers. We, we urge you not to. Um, sometimes social conversations can uh, be misinterpreted in these situations and always take a photo of your parking spot when you're leaving uh, airport uh, parking garages. Often um, when you come back, it's hard to remember where you parked. And if you appear lost, you are putting yourself in danger because anyone that might be observing you knows you don't know where your vehicle is. And parking garages can be a very scary place. They can be dimly lit. There can be no one there that is seeing you. Um, and it's a very private place and a very common place for perpetrators to sit and wait to abduct. So, and certainly do never accept a private ride from a parking garage or anywhere at the airport, someone that might offer you a ride to your hotel. You're putting yourself in danger if you do that. Always enter a public transportation by making a personal call. This is huge. I've done this and had to do this several times. I had at least three incidences where I felt like I was being driven away from, um, or I knew I was being driven away from my designated hotel 
or venue that I was trying to attend. Most taxi drivers and drivers in public transportation are today using GPS if they don't know the area they're bringing you. And so there's really zero reason to go long distances out of the way. And I had one instance where I was 20 minutes in the wrong direction. Um, and this was pre like cell phone GPS tracking. Um, but I just knew a lay of the land. And so I learned through some safety tips to make phone calls. So what you do is you enter the vehicle and once you sit down, you, you know, say hello, of course, you, you know, discuss your, your, um, where you're going. And then you immediately get on your phone and you make a call, whether this is a fake phone call or a real phone call, and you have a person that, you know, you've set the system up, I'm going to make my emergency uh, transportation call to you, you know, I'll be calling at such and such a time. And you make the call and say, hey, it's Christine, I just got in taxi number, because they all list their numbers, by the way, they have a license that uh, they have to appear. Um, if you're using one of the newer systems that don't have a license showing, you might get their name. Um, and say, I'm in a car with Grace. She's driving me to um, the Hilton. I'm 15 minutes away. I just left the airport and um, I should be there on time for our meeting. And so now you've anchored yourself. You've placed a person with you. And if that public transportation driver had ill intentions, you have now basically said where you are and you have fingered that person as a person that you're with and so it's very likely that they're going to commit a crime on you in that situation that's the number one uh trick that we can teach you and with a rise recently in the news it's important that you follow that never walk in non-public or private areas in the airport can't say that enough be very careful about doors you open places you go you can easily step into a, a very private place that you shouldn't be in hotel safety again be careful of stranger interaction. The book opens up with me telling a story um, about being followed. And it's a very personal story and very scary story and a story that prompted me uh, to go to media and share in a video to other women some tips that actually connected me to Jessica Peterson, the co-author on Clear Boundaries, and, and then ultimately uh, wound us up writing this book. Never allow a stranger to see you enter your room. If you're walking down the hallway in the hotel and you feel like you're being followed or there's another stranger, don't go in your room um, because you're going to give away where your room number is and certainly don't let them follow you past you entering your room. You could get shoved inside the door and the door is shut behind you. So if you see that happening, reverse directions immediately, go back uh, to the elevator or the stairwell and wait you know walk down to the lobby and wait until it's clear to go into your room and be very aware if you're leaving a hotel bar that's where my situation occurred never allow a single repairman or bellman in the room if you have a tv that's broken i've had to call for remote controls to be replaced be very careful um you know leave the door open ask for a buddy system always make sure your cell phone is charged that can be super dangerous so you always want to have a charger and a backup charger at all times. Mophies are great for having charge, but you have to have your phone charged. You are really putting yourself in a bad spot if you leave your phone uh, low charge as you're traveling or are in a hotel. Always get two keys to the hotel room. Keep a second one in, the set, in a safe place. And ladies, uh, enter your room number into your cell phone note section and then get away the cardboard key uh, fob holder that you keep in your purse because they write on it the room number. And so if someone gets into your purse, they're going to see exactly where you are. Do not leave drinks open and unintended. This is so important. Put a napkin when you visit the restroom over your drink because something could be slipped in your drink. This happens all the time. We, you know, I know there's a lot of joking going around out there about that, about being roof feed um, and that sort of thing, but it's serious. Like, do not allow yourself to be drugged. Cover your drink. Never drink to full intoxication when traveling. You're going to lose your inhibition. You're going to lose your alertness, and you're going to put yourself in a position where you could have harm done to you and not be in the best position to fight. Never leave your purse open where a hotel key or a car key can be ex car key can be accessed by a stranger. All right, this brings us to our third assignment. So here, I want you to specifically go to your books and go to the Georgia rape story in Clear Boundaries. I want you to read the story or a volunteer in your group out loud. 
and then discuss a like situation that may have occurred and share with one another. Maybe a time that you ended up down a path on a date in a situation where you knew you were trudging in the wrong direction but didn't know how to reverse direction. And talk about ways that you can help yourself better not end up down a dead end road where you really put yourself in harm. We're talking about um, safety here with the Georgia rape story. Good luck with that. And we'll be back in 15 minutes. Pause here. Welcome back. We hope that exercise helped you greatly and that that story that was shared and your stories with each other and advice are helping you uh, avoid situations where you might have like instances occurring and give each other the advice to avoid those situations. We are now at the corporate safety part of this certification. Be aware of unprofessional or uncomfortable office interaction and be willing to discuss with human resources even if you choose not to file a report. Be aware that safety is needed in off-site work events. Those are the two most common corporate safety. We also tell you to be willing to create lines that are clear to coworkers for yourself and see your corporate safety and sexual harassment guides and policies and understand them to protect yourself. So you should have a lot of ways that you can create corporate safety. Listen to your gut. The greatest defense we have is our own intuition. Always tell people where you are going, how long you plan to be there. Always document with whom you are meeting and provide that to a third party in front of the person you are meeting and listen to yourself if you feel a person is giving off a sexual vibe. Okay, now we are at the section where we polled men. What are men saying about safety? What are they saying about where we're at in the movement and how they feel about us taking control of our safety? Well, we asked men, and in our book, we had men share how they were feeling. They said, number one, they want to know where their boundaries are. Yeah, they want to know where they're crossing boundaries. Of course, it's important to them to understand that. So Clear Boundaries has addressed that in so many ways throughout the book. We wrote the book in a very uh, male-minded-esque way as well, because this is not a book just for women. Yes, the primary uh victim of violence in the U.S. is women, and we share a lot of statistics. But however, we want men to understand where their boundaries can be to help women be in a better position, especially in the workplace and the uprising of workplace-related uh, commentary around this topic. Men want women to carry themselves professionally at work, and if they don't, they want women to understand the message they are sending. And they said they understand. It's never okay to violate a person's space or privacy with verbal or physical advancement, no matter how the seduction or perception in the workplace occurred. So men are acknowledging that even if a woman has been flirtatious or appears a certain way, that that is not a permission slip to make advances. So that's important to say out loud. I said, demand respect, but act accordingly. Deliver great results. Be professional. Keep your personal business outside of work, and you will get the respect you desire. And we want to say good guys can be bad too. What does that mean? Never go along to get along. Sometimes we put ourselves in positions where we're around a really great guy uh, by all measures, and you end up down a wrong road that's not easy to turn back from. Never get in a car with someone unless you trust them. And a person's profession doesn't define their safety. So sometimes, ladies, we get a bad gut feeling from somebody that might be a security guard, somebody that might be in a professional uh, position that we look up to. Those people can be bad guys, too. So you need to understand that no title, no profession, none of that defines whether you're safe or not. So you've got to look at the person and not look at the exterior. Um, and that's been true, uh, obviously, in many cases that we've seen in stories that have been shared. We had an executive bodyguard that shared advice in our certification, and these are the tips, the top tips that were shared. Hold your head up when talking on the phone. Stand on the same level as the person you talk to. Know your exits in any room or building. Always leave arms distance to people. Be loud and yell, stranger, help. And be able to react in milliseconds. Same advice as we said in the beginning of the book. Number one tip from an executive bodyguard. 
run and fight and use a makeshift defense weapon. Again, pages 78 and 79 in Clear Boundaries gives you, gives you those uh, defense weapons. That brings us now to home security. We wanna talk about the lines of defense with home security. Your first line of defense, clearly your alarm. You could also put up beware of dog signs. That's going to deter burglars and intruders on your property, even if you don't have a dog. I had to sign up before I had a dog because of a near break-in situation that occurred that was super scary. Do not trespass signs will uh, tell people that probably if they trespass, there's an alarm or there's a security system. Those are all first line of defense uh, mechanisms. Second line of defense uh, in your, is your security system. Please use it. You have to make sure your alarm system is set up in every way that you want it to work for you. If you have a big property that has private entry areas, you wanna have cameras at those entry areas. You want to have visible outdoor signs that you have a security system. Maybe a label in the window, maybe a sign on the lawn that says this home is protected by X, Y, or Z. Um, the third line of defense is your plan. We lack plans. You know, when you're in a situation, a lot of times you're scrambling and you're not thinking right. So what is your family's emergency plan in case of an intruder? What is yours if you're alone? Have a safe hiding place or create one and organize a neighborhood buddy system. Those are things that in home situations are going to help you. Sit down and form that plan. And then the last line of defense are weapons. We want you to be trained, get certified, and practice, practice, practice. Using a weapon for home protection requires thought, planning, safekeeping, and arranging for proper and legal use. And please keep them safe, locked up, and away from the hands of children. So, so important. Follow the safety guides of all the training. If you choose to have this last line of defense as a weapon, which is our American right, you need to have the safety training that's provided through uh, the obtaining of any weapon. And our final and last assignment, assignment number four, we are going to ask you to sit down with your family this week and make your home emergency plan, as well as think about what your business emergency plan is if either of those places are broken into. And then once that plan is written down, share it with each other and make sure that you bring it back up in the future and that you go over that plan frequently. By writing both of those plans down, you will put those to memory and you will have a clear and concise way to react on a much faster level. Spend the next 10 minutes quietly writing down in a notebook what you think your best suggestions for creating an emergency plan at your family home would be, and then set up a time to prepare to sit with the family and have a family meeting. And then share with each other in the group that you're sitting with what it is that you think your family plan will look like. You can pause here. Welcome back. We hope that exercise was really great at helping you form your family plan and sitting down and now having something pen and inked and a time to share with your family will keep you safer in the future. We are now talking about vehicle safety. So there's many situations where you, when you're in your vehicle, you are in harm's way because you're out in public and obviously uh, crimes occur in public. So never stop because a person points and tells you to. If a car door is suddenly opened, be prepared to accelerate or change direction quickly. Never park in the same place. This is a common, common mistake. Perpetrators will watch for periods in lengthy times, and we tend to go to that same parking place. I do it. Mix it up. Switch it up. You need to park in different places all the time. Hide two defense weapons in your car, one that you can easily reach, and then a second hidden one that you can get to in case when you go for the easy reachable one, it's taken away from you by your uh, perpetrator. And they think now they've stripped you of your weapon. Having a second one that you might be able to get to uh, may be the key. So be doubly prepared in your vehicle. And then this brings us to one of our most important sections, and that's realtor safety. And we picked realtors because it's the number one professional perpetrated violent crime area in the country. 
because of the private setting. So we're going to give specific tips today to realtors. It's near and dear to Jessica and I, of course, we both work uh, in and around realtors and we want uh, to share this gift with realtors since it's the number one area and it's an area we both are uh, working and affiliated with and can have the greatest impact. Um, three is a family. Always have a buddy system for home showings. Uh, we've heard, and the book opens up with crime that was committed, a violent crime, a real story of murder against a realtor that became a famous case and began to change the forefront and evolution of realtor safety. Never give out your home address, even if someone wants to send you something, a thank you. Always have a P.O. box. Do not put your personal marketing out there um, in a way that would attract perpetrators. I know we have to market, but we need our imaging to be professional and we need our messages to be professional and dress professionally, please. Uh, that's so important. And I would also go back to framing the keep it professional frame would be so important. And if you put the keep it professional frame on there, I want to say right here, go ahead and tag uh, myself or Jessica or Candy. Again, it's Christine Beckwith. It's Jessica Peterson, Candy Zolkowski. If using Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, other uh, means, you know, show us your frames. We want to share and create a movement that is keep it professional in social media. And you'll see that in our book. So by all means, let us know that you did that, especially you realtors who we know have such a big marketing face uh, out in the public. Do your homework before the meeting. If your gut tells you not to trust someone, then don't. And have an emergency word or a couple to a couple people that you can text and call if you're in an emergency situation. Again, we go into this in the book. It's so important. We tell you how to do this. But again, a great way to set up a system for emergencies. And see the National Association of Realtor Safety Checklists on page 110 that we have put in clear boundaries that it's all about realtor safety. So this brings us as we near to the end of the certification, and we just want to take a moment to recognize the revolution that has been brewing and has come to the forefront in the recent year. And that is the cover of uh, Time Magazine ch choosing that the people of the year will be people that have created movements for women, that have given women a voice against violent crimes and sexual discrimination in the workplace, and that is Tarana Burke with her Time's Up movement. We are so proud of the work that she's done. And with time, we applaud her for bringing a voice to women everywhere. We want to commend Oprah Winfrey for her uh, speech that she gave at the Emmys. A new day is on the horizon. That speech has gone viral. And it is a wonderful speech for all women, young uh, and of any age, about uh, a new day being here, and it certainly gives us hope and breeds uh, hope and liberation towards this cause. And this is our contribution. Keep it professional with clear boundaries with us. And we hope that our book will go viral and that we will save lives. So in the end, we ask you subscribe to businesswomensafety.com. Share your story. We cannot thank you enough for joining us today. We're so proud that you invested in yourself with this certification. We hope that you will continue to pay the gift forward and that you will buy the bulk books that are available at high discounts that allow us to share and spread our word and put the safety manual in the hand of every possible female that we come into interaction with. And we tell you all to please move forward being safe and create your clear boundaries today. Want you to read the chapters in clear boundaries schedule a breakout time to discuss and share your personal experiences we have found in creating clear boundaries the book that in the community of discussion the greatest shared best practices have occurred write down the best tips that come out of this group experience and then recap to each other all of these points so that you can create a living example of the best practices within your own group that exists from your own experiences.